Hey guys, Aaron here. Welcome back to the channel. I am at Street Legends again with Sean, the man, myth, and legend. Today he is going to help me again, this time trying to restore the cloudy rear window of my 1998 Porsche Boxster. This is actually a viewer requested video from a comment that somebody left on the last video that I worked on with Sean where he did a paint correction on the Boxster. They noticed that he did a super job on the rear window, which was an extra bonus to me because I wasn't even expecting that. So I figured I'd dedicate a full video on how to do that. All right guys, so your back plastic window probably looks something like this or worse. That's why you are here watching this video. So if you saw the paint restoration and savior video, uh, there's a link to it right here if you haven't, but this was in a little over a year ago and this window was nice and crystal clear. Uh, after a year of use, you can see right in the middle, the crease where the top gets uh, closed. This rubs against itself a lot. So that is always the worst part, but you can see there's lots of uh, just cobwebbing and scratching and stuff just from daily use. So I'm gonna have Sean talk about the correct process to get that looking good again. So once again, Sean. <laughs> uh, so we're taking a convertible plastic window and the first thing you're gonna wanna do is clean it with some glass cleaner just to get all the dust and debris off. The second thing you probably would wanna do is tape it off. And the reason why we're gonna tape it off is so we don't squeeze compound and polishes and stuff like that inside the cracks and crevices. It'll just make it a little bit harder to clean and just, just kind of keeps it safe just in case. So it's a good practice to do. Uh, the last time I did your window, we used a dedicated plastic polish. Um, this time around, I'm gonna test a compound polish that you would use for your paint. Uh, I've done this before and it seems to work okay. So as most people who you know tinker or DIY, they're gonna have these kind of things laying around. The only thing they might not have is a, a machine and that's really gonna speed up the process. That's gonna make it look a little bit better. So if you have it, use it. And that's also the reason why we taped it off. You can do it by hand, but just don't expect kind of the same results as far as clarity or, or whatnot. So, so just a little wrap, uh, random orbital. Yep, this polisher. is a three inch polisher. I'm gonna be using a Meguiar's um, microfiber and then a Lake Country orange pad as the final polish. That's my kind of go-to for most things universally. And uh, we're going to be using a compound and a polish in a two-step process. First thing I noticed is that stuff smells really good. <laughs> yeah. There's a couple of things I want to point out. Um, usually when you're correcting paint, you're pushing down in order to get the defects out as you're correcting. Obviously this is plastic and this stuff will generate heat. So you're not trying to, you're not trying to correct anything. You're just trying to get rid of the, the haze and the fog. So the weight of the machine is all you need. If you go and you push down on this and you stay on one area too long, the chance of stretching it out, it's almost like heating up plastic. You don't want to do that. So that's that's a ca word of caution if we're going to be doing this thing with a machine. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, as far as speed goes, I'm not using an aggressive speed. I'm kind of like somewhere in the middle. Just enough to, if you're using a DA machine, enough for it to spin. Um, a rotary might be a little bit more aggressive than I would want to use. So if you have an old school rotary machine, put it on the lowest speed if possible, just in, and test it because those things generate more heat than these will. So obviously this is gonna get worse before it gets better. Yeah, you can see kind of from this angle that it is. That's the shiny stuff. Yep, stage two.
right, so we just cleaned that stuff off. You'll never get this thing to look brand new. If you want brand new, replace it. Yeah. But usually, you know, when like when you first brought yours in here, I don't even think you could see out of it. Right? Yeah, I could not. Yeah. So we've already done it once, and what I'm looking at, as far as like, I was hoping for a little bit better, and you could probably do this multiple times. Right. Just be really careful with that, because um, it does generate heat, but this isn't that bad. Sometimes you might have to do the inside, depending on how long or how old it's gotten this far. Um, and you, you could test that on a towel and if you can get back there, just kind of test the spot that doesn't look good to you. If you start to see it come clear, then you know it's on the inside. Um, generally, they're on the outside. You can polish the outside and still get some clarity to it. Uh -huh. um, so what I, what I might do over on this side is kind of just do like a square uh -huh. in where the worst spot is, like in the middle here. Uh -huh. And then that way you can really see like a nice visual difference between what it was. Cause I feel like on camera, this might not show up as good as it should. Right. Yeah. Um, but you I can think... definitely see a difference in person. Okay. So let's try that. We'll put a little square over there and kind of see if we can get a really good support. Yeah. yeah and after uh, 23 years, I'm sure the inside does need some work too. Cause like I said before, you know, we've done this on this uh, window before and to show maybe like a really good 50, 50, of what this can do um, i'm going to create a square so that way visually you can see on your end what this can do yep. so we'll try this first so clear clear not so clear I felt like the um, polish that we were using in the beginning was just a little light mm -hmm. so we switched it up to Sonex perfect finish right. I mean that works I don't know that's a miracle in a bottle for everything <laughs> from soft paint to sticky paint I mean if you're trying to make something look amazing after uh -huh. correcting anything paint glass whatever that's the go-to I mean it really is yeah. I've tried to find something better. I just keep coming back to it. That's why I buy a big bottle of it. Right. Um, all right, so now we know what products, what pads work. Um, something to note, uh, people might ask if you've never used a polish before, how long do you work it in, right? Uh -huh. That's a question that happens. And a lot of that's gonna be dictated towards whatever polishes that you use. Um, the rule of thumb is, is you work it in until whatever polish and compounds, whatever it is that you're using is, starts to go clear. Okay. I've ran into some polishes and some compounds, like the old school stuff, that as soon as, you, as soon as you get around a couple of times, it automatically starts to dry. And if that's the case, then just stop, wipe it off. If it needs it, keep working on it. Gotcha. Um, but for the most part, you just work it until it starts to go clear and then you're pretty much done. Okay, great. So let me grab a different machine and I can work on the whole thing at once now that we know this. I'll come back with this machine and do all the edge work. All right, so same thing, just on a bigger scale now? Yeah, we're gonna be using, a, just to cut through this a little faster, I mean, either one of these work fine if that's all you have. This is a five inch pad, that's a three inch pad. Um, the reason why I'm using this is just because it's a lot faster. Yeah. Um, you can get fancy with it. If you have a three inch, and you can do the whole thing with that, it's fine, no problem. Uh, this is just gonna get the bulk of everything, and then I'm gonna come back with a three inch, and I'm gonna do all the edge work, because there's nothing that will stand out more than if you get all this nice and neat, and then, you have this like one inch area all right. the way around that just right. looks bad. So yeah. I can't let him walk out of here like that. you rinse the other stuff off between coatings or just um, go straight into it doesn't with this kind of stuff okay. it's not like paint where you're trying to like mitigate things gotcha. and the type of polish that i'm using is diminishes so as you longer you work it the more it becomes a polish than a compound ah. Just 
So after you do the outside uh, and you can still see some stuff, if you put the car kind of in service position, you'll be able to reach your hand through the inside and do a little hand polishing. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like. It's not easy, but I just wanted to see if it would make a difference from what I'm seeing that's left over. It's harder to do by hand because you don't get the same results, but it definitely made a it made a little bit of difference in what I'm seeing left. I want that middle piece so bad right here. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard to reach in there. If you wanted to and uh, do a really serious job, you can actually pop out the wind deflectors behind the uh, between the seats and the little honeycomb ones, so you could reach back there a little easier. But that's a lot of work. I'd start with the outside first, always, because that's going to be the easiest, best bang for your buck. And then if you're really anal or OCD and you want to get in there, have fun. Yeah. All right, so we just finished up knocking out the rest of the windshield or rear window. Um, got all that two-step corrected, compound first, polish second. And just for, you know, why not kind of purposes, um, I'm going to use a Jezcar Power Lock Plus and just to kind of see if it will help prolong this from getting worse again in the future. It would probably help rain water if it sits on there. So I don't think it's gonna do anything much over a long period of time, but just to, cause we're here and why not, you know? So I'm just gonna put a little bit on a microfiber and I'm gonna work it in till you can, so you can barely see it, just enough to get a nice film. And then I'm gonna let it dry for a little bit and then I'm gonna come back and wipe it off and again, I don't think this is a necessary step, but I feel like it'll help me sleep at night knowing that I've protected <laughs> it in some way. I'm probably gonna get the question like, can you ceramic coat this stuff? And the answer is maybe. <laughs> I wouldn't wanna do it on somebody else's car just in case it has some kind of reaction. And the only reason why I say that is because if it was my car and I wanted to try it, yeah, it's my car at the end of the day, but this isn't my car, so. I don't want to test something I've never done before. I'd rather be safe than sorry, because ceramic coatings are pretty forgiving in the sense of fixing them on paint. But this is a plastic uh, rear windshield and a convertible top, and if there is a problem with it, and the only way to fix it is to replace it, that's not cheap. So we'll let that sit there for a while, and um, just kind of let it cure, give it the best chance possible. I'll start pulling the tape off, blow all the dust and dirt, um, again, you know, I think this would be for anyone who's going to DIY, DIY uh, their back windshield. Don't expect, come in with like lowered expectations <laughs> and hope to be blown away right. when you're done. Because, you know, you never know every, every windshield, every rear windshield is going to be different. Some are going to be worse, some are going to be uh, better. I think though, if yours is cracked, if, this, if the stitching isn't good, then I would probably avoid doing it with a machine because it's only going to make it worse. If you're putting any kind of weight on it. I don't want you guys to run into any problems and be like, oh, he told me it was okay and now I got a big hole and I'm, you know, 45 miles away from home and it's gonna rain. So we don't want that. But, it, you know, if it's just haze, it's gonna be better than nothing. So at the end of the day, like I said, don't expect greatness, but come in with lowered expectations and hope to be blown away. In case anybody was wanting to know what kind of tape I was using, uh, this is 3M. And I'll go ahead and put links to all of the products that we've used here today in the description of this video so you can check them out for yourself. All right, guys, here is the after out in the sunlight. So you can definitely see through it once again. 